Alright, listen. I know it looks scuffed, but trust me, it isn't. I don't know how else to approach the video, but you know what? Slideshows are easy to follow. So I got you with that. So guys, I've never done a video like this, and so I'm really excited actually. Um, what led me to doing this video was the most common question I get asked on my stream about when do you go AP or AD Katarina? And I never really address it, and I just ignore it because it's not really a simple question that I could answer with like one line, so I was like, hey, maybe I'll just do a video on it. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy my video, even though it's not really like highlights, it's something different, something new. You can support it. Anyways. So if you don't know who I am, I'll just prove my credibility on my ability to play cat and how I've mastered her. In case people think I'm a noob that doesn't know what I'm talking about. So I've been pretty much high elo since season four. I've won trick to cat since season two. You can see from my OPGG that I ended challenger on two accounts in season nine. 700 LP plus, and in last season, then I ended Challenger on three accounts, all above 650 LP. Now, before I get into anything, I want to emphasize and add a disclaimer that this is my own personal playstyle on Cat. Obviously, people may disagree or suggest other builds in the comments, but I just wanted to let you know that I don't give a fuck, man. I've probably tried all the builds and room setups you are about to suggest, but I don't succeed with them because they don't fit my playstyle, and then I try to force myself to play in that playstyle, and I just fucking end up griefing and tilting over the LP I lost. Anyways, you don't have to play like me, but all I know is that this playstyle is viable since it's how I win games, and yeah, it works for me. It works, and if it works in my elo, then it probably works in yours too. I've been testing a lot of cat builds lately, and I found, I finally found a few that were consistent and clicked with me. You know what they say, man? Lose is learn. Lose, lose or improve. I mean, win, win, win or in, win or learn. Fuck, I can't talk. Anyways, whatever. Um, I anyway, I'm not. I want to say that I'm not late on finding builds, it's just in every patch this season, um, they've significant, significantly nerfed uh, her like items that she uses. As we can see here, look, I, look at this collage I made, I worked really hard on it, I hope we can all appreciate my efforts. Look at that, wow. With all these fucking nerfs, oh my god. Anyways, yeah, it's just been really hard to, like, figure out the main, like, go-to build because of how many nerfs there have, been, there have been, and it's like, that's probably why people ask me which build is better because they don't want to figure it out themselves because, hey, it's hard, it's so hard, alright? So to start it off, I run Conquer every game. With domination, I never go taste of blood. I don't switch up anything in this room setup. I the only thing that changes magic resistor armor. Um, I start Thorn's Blade every game. They change it so it's viable on cat this season because of the Omni Vamp and it works really well with Conquer. It allows you to get like potential solo kills if you know how to combo with your autos early game. If you know how to like take advantage of your laner overstepping, you set up the wave properly. Anyways, this is not a guide on cat. This is just a, a build rundown. I can't get into the re everything else. Um. Anyways, like if you go dark harvest or electrocute, or you start Doran's ring or dark seal with those runes, you can't really win all ends, and you have to like rely on short trades, trades, which is just not for me, man. 
Another tip I just wanted to add was to build a refillable pot whenever you can because it's an infinite sustainability. Uh, it's part of like my playstyle, right? You want to like rush your power spikes. You need to get refillable ASAP to get the most value out of it. Alright, now before we get into the, the real build, you read this and fucking sign the contract and say, I will never rush a mythic item on Katarina. Thank you. If you do it, you are going to get punished. All your LP will go away. Okay. Here it is, our first build, which is Hybrid Katarina. You always want to max E first with this setup. Do not fucking put levels in Q until your E is maxed out. So if you don't know how to use Kat, Darina's auto resets with her E and, st and stuff, um, you better start learning. Her Katarina in this season is all about her autos because of how she is on hit. It's kind of like Aurelia, similar to that, it feels like it. Um, anyways, I'll show you a clip after of how you should like play with this build and how you should like juggle your autos. You can't just like throw your abilities out without fucking using your autos and shit. Anyways, um, you ideally rush Bork into Riftmaker unless you really need Zonya second, which would be verse this because of his all. 80 heavy teams or things that can one shot you like Rengar, I don't know, something like that um, when to go this build you can go it when your team lacks AD like if, say you have a bunch of AP teammates I don't know, like Swain, Swain ADC or you just have like an AP jungler, you can still go it, yeah and here's something you need to know you should always go this build when you're against Fizz Kassadin or Galio, because they all take reduced magic damage. Oh, oh, also the build is good against tanks, you definitely want to go this build against tanks. So yes, even if your team is all AD, you go this build. If you don't, then you're trolling yourself, because you won't be able to play the game at all. You won't be able to side lane, you won't be able to have... to really do much in team fights. I mean, you can, but like, it's just so much value like you get so much pressure in the side lane they can't really win against you but if you go ap you pretty much get stomped you cannot be the alpha alpha daddy um yeah so the thing about this build is if your team's all ad if the enemy is smart they will rush seekers arm guard if they're ap but it's like honestly they won't like, if you're below diamond, they will not go Seekers. I doubt it. Um, anyways, yeah, it doesn't even really matter because Kat does mixed damage. She does AP regardless of uh, your build. And when your Borg is complete, that arm guard doesn't do shit. Like, it completely, like, sh shreds them. Like, where did their health go? It hits so hard, man. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that build. Here's a clip I was talking about. Just pay attention to like how I use my autos here. Um, feel free to slow the video down on your own. I'll just play it. I was pretty proud of this play. Like you see how I like use my autos really, really well. Like if I just say I missed like one auto, I think the play would have went in their favor. But yeah, here we go. Oh. Alright, on to the next build. So now the AP build is pretty straightforward. I know some people like to rush Lich Bane, but honestly, Nashers is so much better. They nerf Lich Bane too much and it doesn't have like a permanent passive like Nashers does. Nashers gives 100 AP while Lich Bane gives 70. Nashers enhances all your autos and abilities since they're on hit now. While well, Hbean has a 2.5 second cooldown, which really it only like enhances your autos or E. And I feel like Lich Bane complements Nashers 
So it's definitely much better to go Nashers first. Like I've tried both, like rushing both, but honestly, I'm spending money on it. Nashers is just so much better. Just trust. Anyway, so for Lich Bane versus Zanya's, I think that Zanya's second is never a bad buy. But Lich Bane is more risky. You can never go wrong with defense if that makes sense. Um, like even if you're behind, defense is good. If you're ahead, defense is good. I would only go Lich Bane if you're like very, very fed. Um, I also, uh, I haven't tested this much, but if you want, you can go Sheen and then Sonya's and then you can finish your Lich Bane after. That's, it's pretty good. Um, so they changed Rhythmic-er's Omnivamp and Mythic Passive. So it becomes much more valuable as your third or fourth buy. So they changed the 15% Omnivamp to 8% and for every legendary item you get 2% more Omnivamp. So if you have Nashers, Zonyas, and Lich, you'll be at 14% Omnivamp and then you have it, yeah. It's good. I don't know if boots count, sorry. I, I don't even know that, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't like building it early because it feels really underwhelming. Like, you, it doesn't really give you that much damage. And, and instead, it like complements your other items because of the mythic passive. So, you definitely want to build it later. So for last item, you don't really go with Void Staff because of how Rift Maker gives you true damage. So unless they're hard stacking magic resist, then you shouldn't go it. And I think Death Cap should be your last item for the most part. Also, yeah, Rush Seeker's Arm Guard against 80 matchups, unless you're like hard winning lane. And Max Q versus range, Max E versus melee. So Talon, Echo, you want to max E. You can win lane with E max, I really like it. With the AP build, you ideally always want to go Sork Boots. Um, the only time you ever don't go it is if you need Merc Treads, if you really need them. It's like for Fiddlesticks and a bunch of other CC. Uh, never tall buys, no other boots, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, I wasn't going to include this build because everyone's saying it's not viable, but I will give my take on it. So your core items are Bork, into Kraken Slayer, and then your third item is completely situational. Situational, if they have burst, you go Starax. If you need sustain, you go Ravenous. If they're heavy AD, you go Death Stance. Um, honestly, I played this build after the Kraken nerfs and... The change was the the interaction between Kraken and her ult, and honestly, it didn't even feel that bad. Like your ult is like a bit underwhelming, a, a bit over, a bit. But we all know that Kraken Slayer was fucking brain dead OP before the nerfs, and now it's just balanced. You can't just complain about Riot not fucking nerfing that shit. It's it wasn't so. Elo inflating. Anyways, I haven't played this build much, but I wouldn't call it unviable. The thing is, AP cat, cat is better and it scales better, which is probably why people are not bothering with this build anymore. Um, just like due to the better options. Um, also cat's ra AP ratios are better. They nerfed her AD ratios on all her abilities plenty of times in the past. Um, so yeah, the only time this build would be good if, if your, is if your team really needs the AD. Um, yeah, that's, that's all. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Mm -hmm.